Back so soon, huh? You're a strange one, sir. It must be something special to convince you to return. Although, if I had a Goomba that cute waiting for me at the dock, I might return too. Hey man, okay, lay off Goombella. Well, whatever you're doing, be careful. Goodbye, sir. Long time no see, Mario. I'm totally glad I got to see you again. This is awesome. Everyone's ready. We heard you were coming, so we've been waiting here for you. Yeah, it's really nice to see the whole crew here. So, are you ready to go? Wherever you want to go, we are so there with you. Well, lucky for you, I have a lot of pain and torture in store for us today. Here we go. You thought we were done? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Man, I missed this sorry excuse for a town. Let's go say hi to Frankly. You seem pretty cheery, and as always, I'm happily busy with my research. Good in here, man. By the by, do you know what was in that treasure chest we found in the palace? It contained... a dried mushroom! Really? Oh, no, it's nothing to be disappointed by. Now we know for certain that people indeed ate mushrooms 1,000 years ago. This is a groundbreaking anthropological discovery. Uh, you know, whatever... whatever. <laughs> Whatever fancies you, frankly. Yep, alright. Okay, I know I've been kind of slacking on this, but I should probably do my lottery here. Despite the fact that I probably know what's gonna happen. Alright, lottery number is 6251. What are we getting? 3351. Okay, okay! The last two numbers! Amazing! Happy Lucky! You won the third prize! Here's your rank 3 prize! An Ultra Mushroom. Woo, I guess. Congratulations to you. This is a lucky, happy day. That is for certain. Come back again tomorrow, too. I'll be waiting happily. You know, I'm going to say this right now. If I hadn't gotten anything for this last uh, <laughs> this last revisit to the lottery system, I definitely would have seen what happens if I changed the date of my Switch. Um, maybe I can get more chances out of that. Who knows? Hey there, Luigi buddy. He's here in the inn after we complete Chapter 8, so we can talk to him whenever we want. I've been catching a breather here, you know, reflecting back on all my adventures. It's been a long road, bro. Wanna hear what happened? It's a pretty long story. Well, I didn't give him the chance to tell us the thrilling conclusion to his story, Hate Song Tower, because we had kind of more pressing matters. So, I'm gonna go ahead and listen to this, and uh, I'll be frank here. I've been a little harsh to Luigi throughout this series, where I've been making fun of him and not giving him the time of day when it comes to telling his story in full, and I do feel sort of bad for that. So, let's go ahead and hear out the thrilling conclusion to his story, Hate Song Tower, in its entirety. Well, like I said, it's a really long story, and this part is just wild, but here goes. Hate Song Tower stands atop... That was a gripping narrative, my guy. I honestly had to hold back tears. But there's also something here called the Super Luigi book. Let's take a look at this. Actually, you know what? This guy novelized my quest. He's been interviewing me. He was actually interviewing me here at the end during my breaks for my adventure. I didn't think anyone would be interested in reading a book about a Luigi. But Super Luigi came out recently, and check this out, bro. Here in Roqueport, it set a new record for consecutive weeks at number one on the bestseller list. Oh, hooray for Luigi, bro. I started reading it the other day, but it's an encyclopedic account in multiple volumes. Excruciating detail, bro. It's like a history book. It seemed like one, anyway. They've got it in the shop here in Roqueport. How about you snag a copy, bro? Hmm, curious. Also, Flavio's here. Hello there, you Mario. You are doing well, I must assume, yes? Who, me? You were asking? Well, I am now the second richest man in Rogueport. Yes, having my beautiful SS Flavion smashed to bits was not a financial boon. But do not think I regret our fabulous adventure. Perhaps you and I will sail again someday. You know what? I would like that. There's a glitch in the original Paper Mario that is utilized in certain speedruns just for the laughs. Oh, <laughs> almost hung Mario there. Um, and it has to do with, uh, Flavio being in your party for pretty much the entire run once you've gotten to kill all key, and it, it turns certain cutscenes into kind of a mess, but it's really funny, and I hope that eventually speedrunners of this version of Paper Mario find a way to bring that glitch back to life. 
Now, I'll be frankly, um, I definitely slacked on troubles for the for the pat final two chapters of the game because I felt like the story was a little bit more important than deviating to go help some random people. So, we have a lot to catch up on. And this will be the first major thing we do in this video. We're going to keep Help Me Daddy for the last one, since this is involved with some other major piece of content. But we're going to be going down the list from here onwards. Starting with important thing. Frankie has lost his wedding ring, and in order to avoid Francesca's wrath, he has us search for it in secret. Running back over to where we dropped in on Bobbery's house, there is an arch you can jump onto to obtain the lost ring. Return it to Frankie and get a gold key onto parlor card. Second up is get these ingredients. Chef Shimi needs some ingredients for a recipe they're working on. A golden leaf, a mystic egg, and a keel mango are needed. The leaf can be found in the side courtyard of the creepy steeple. Hit the large tree behind the building to have it drop the item. The mystic egg can be won from Petunie if you play her game. Input Mario likes which person the most to get the item from her. Lastly, the kill mango can be found on trees near the makeshift town in Kilhaw Key. Enter the Access Express and hand over the items to Shimi to get 40 coins. Third on our list is I Need My Magazine. Toodles wants a magazine she lent to Jolene back as soon as possible. Simply visiting Jolene in Glitzville, getting the magazine back, and reporting to Toodles will reward us with a platinum card. Next is Security Code. The businessman from Poshley Heights is trying to remember the passcode to his briefcase so he can make a deal here in Glitzville, but he's forgotten the passcode. Normally, you're supposed to travel the world in search of specific chairs in order to crack the code, but to save us both time, the answer is simply 2625. Claim his company's hot sauce as your prize. Next up is Newsletter. Mayor Dower of Twilight Town wants us to deliver a silver club letter to the Elder at the Great Tree in Boggly Woods. Easy enough. So we head down to the Elder and have her sign the letter. Afterwards, she sends us to meet with the Mayor of Petalburg so the old man can sign it as well. After a trip to all the old folk, returning to Mayor Dower will reward us with 30 coins. Next is I Can't Speak. Gob the Babom from Far Outpost is currently unable to speak and wants our help. But first, before we do anything else, Go ahead and purchase a honey syrup and cake mix, and combine them to create a honey candy. We'll need that for later. Next, head to Far Outpost, locate Gob by the Snowman, and give him the honey candy. Doing this will reward us with 30 coins. Up next is Roust These Cads. Doe-T wishes to see the Great Tree up close, but they're having a hard time with all the enemies in the way. Simply make your way to Boggly Woods and clear out the nearby enemies on the way to the tree, and you'll be rewarded with 30 coins. Next is Help Me Make Up. Little Bub and his mother got into an argument, and Bub wants to get something for his mom to help make amends. There are a few ways to resolve this, but I decided to purchase a mushroom and a cake mix and combine them to create a mushroom cake. Next, I headed to Pasha Heights and told Bub that the cake would make a good present for his mother. He asks us to deliver the cake and a letter to his mother, and after a heartwarming scene, we're rewarded with Bub's life savings of three coins. Next up is I Wanna Meet Luigi. Kodia of Poshley Heights wants to meet her darling Luigi by the fountain in town. Thanks to our L emblem, we can transform Mario's clothes into that of Luigi's, letting us fulfill Todia's dreams with absolutely no hearts broken whatsoever. Last up for this quick session is Delivery Please. Gold Bob wants us to deliver a package to General White, who should be in Far Outpost. Unfortunately, it seems we just missed him, and he was last seen heading off to Rogueport. Yep, time for another General White chase. Head to the Rogueport Tavern and talk to the bartender, to be told that the General has set off for Glitzville. The juice barkeep there will send us back to Poshley Heights, where Gold Bob will tell us that General White had returned to Far Outpost. Finally, after you arrive in the outpost, wake up the General again like you did in Chapter 7 to deliver the package. Afterwards, report back to Gold Bob to finally obtain our reward of 64 points. Man, troubles like that are just pure agony. Definitely my least favorite part of this game is just the constant backtracking. Also, if you didn't realize in a previous cutscene, yeah, um, Bo from the original Paper Mario is here. Now, she is actually my favorite partner in the base game, so this has always been a really nice treat. 
It is you, isn't it, Mario? Well, it's been quite a while, hasn't it? Well, uh, for me personally it has, but I haven't done the other game on this channel yet. I've come here with Bootler. Yes, a little vacation to Pasha Sancta. I hadn't left the mansion in ages. I figured it was time to turn some heads on the road. <laughs> but what a nice surprise to see you. Feel free to be overwhelmed by my beauty. What's up, Bootler? Lady Bo, your beauty is like the song of a nightingale in the evening. Indeed, I feel you've grown into a fine young girl who'd make your ancestors proud. It's nice to see these two here. Other than Bo and Paracarry, I can't really remember if there's any other references to the uh, first Paper Mario partners outside of, like, one picture in the ending. Um, but it's still nice to have them regardless. Now, I'll admit, I've been a bad brother. There actually is Super Luigi books in the shop here in Rogueport, and I haven't bought any of them, so, you know what, let's go ahead and support, uh, family, you know? This first book is 64 coins, though. Dang, Luigi, okay. If we go into useful items, we can see Super Luigi, which actually does have a more detailed look at the journey that Luigi took. Honestly, I feel like um, there are multiple volumes that you can obtain. I believe there's five of them. There are multiple volumes you can take, and honestly, I think I'll leave that to you to read. It's uh, something that you can look forward to if you ever buy this game. Now, with the Shadow Queen defeated and the Palace of Shadow being completely opened and observable by people, I do want to come back to Mr. Loremaster over here and see if they have any more tales for us. Seems like they do. Dragons and dungeons. And, uh, yeah, a lot more. Okay, well, I guess let's go ahead and see what they got. Starting with dragons and dungeons. The demon built a dungeon near its palace and filled it with terrifying monsters. All those who fell into disfavor were thrown into this dungeon to rot. Yay, and the demon also had three dragon pets, Hooktail, Gloomtail, and Bonetail. These dragons flew across the land, spreading fear and sorrow over all. The dragon's remains have never been found, and even now, some nervously wonder if they're still alive. The four heroes thought they had sealed away the demon and all of its powers. But the demon used a tiny opening before the seal was complete to curse them all. While holding the crystal stars, they feel nothing. But when they'd let them go, a black chest would appear to seal their souls within. The four heroes traveled the world, scattering the stars so the seal would remain. But the last four stars each carried the curse, which claimed each hero. The hiding places of many of the crystal stars have now faded into legend. But some say that the wise Goomba hid one in the great tree. At the time, many monsters wandered in the nearby Boggly Woods. The tiny punies living in the woods were constantly tormented by the fierce monsters. Pitying them, the Goomba hollowed out the great tree for the punies to live in. The punies were so grateful that they swore to protect the crystal star there. Once the Boo heroine hid her star in a steeple, she was trapped in the nearby town. Some say the crystal star lies in that steeple still. The Koopa hero went to a southern isle to hide his star where none would find it. But the Koopa was so tired from his journey that the pirate Cortez stole it easily. In that very instant, the brave Koopa was trapped in an inescapable chest. But Cortez did not realize the power of the star and lost it among his treasures. The strong toad held his star and continued his arduous journey. But eventually, the miles took their toll upon him, and he collapsed. A traveling healer happened by and saved his life, but the toad knew his fate was to be trapped in the chest when the star was gone. So he asked this healer to hide the star in a secret place known to no one. The heroes knew that the seal might not last forever, and they sought to make the crystal stars available to one who might need them. So before going to their individual dooms, they made a map to all the stars. And to prevent an evil force from misusing this map, they placed it in a box that could only be opened by the pure of heart. Oh, well, I mean, this wasn't on my agenda, but the Wandering Sisters are here. We're the Traveling Sisters 3. Eek! The water's so cold. Ooh, but it feels so good! It's weird that they actually... Yeah, I completely forgot they weren't here in Kiel Key the first time around. Makes sense, they weren't on our boat, but hey, there they are. No, I have more pressing matters to tend to. Hey there, buddy. 
I'm back. Give me a bump. I want to get a few of these, so, uh, <laughs> we've got to respawn them real quick. This right here, I think, will make bump number four. This is number five. And for right now, this will be number six. You can get eight whack -a bumps total from this little guy here. And I'm going to save the last two for a special occasion. Okay, time for what is going to be one of the main events for this episode. Let's go back into the Trouble Center, because I conveniently left two off the table here. Help my daddy, and erase the graffiti. These are tied to a piece of content I have not talked about at all at this point, and that has been available since the prologue. But now we're finally, finally going to tackle it. So, let's go ahead and take on Help My Daddy. I need you to save my dad. I'll be waiting at the entrance to the Pit of 100 Trials beneath Rogue Ports. If you help me, I'll give you my treasure as a reward, a member's card for the Pianta Parlor. Oh yeah, Pit of 100 Trials down in Rogueport Sewers. Here we go. Now getting to the pit is pretty simple, we just want to basically go towards the Thousand Year Door as it's nearby. We'll go back to the Thousand Year Door. If you are curious... You can actually open this up and go back into the Palace of Shadow if you missed anything. There's not really much for us there. I think I got pretty much everything I wanted, but it's there if you want it. We can go ahead and plane it up. And enter through this door. Welcome to the Pit of 100 Trials. You took on my trouble? Oh, thank the stars. This is just terrible. My dad went into the Pit of 100 Trials and he never came out. He lost his job and said the only way to support us was the Pit's treasure. But I don't need treasure. I just want my dad back. Please help him. All right, kiddo. I'm gonna go ahead and heal up from, I think, the one piece of damage I took from a random enemy somewhere. Danger. Do not enter. This pipe is the entrance to the Pit of 100 Trials. Burst attack and bump attack badges don't work, so beware. Yeah, we're going to have to fight everything in here as normal if we decide to enter in here. I've been putting off this area in this dungeon for so long. I think it's high time we go ahead and tackle it. Okay, first enemy up here is a blue Goomba. I don't think we've actually fought in a while, if at all. This is a Gloom Goomba, if I remember right. They're not very strong. Most of the enemies here we're going to be able to take down pretty easily off the get-go. We're just so incredibly powerful, and if you have a lot of lots of power pluses and power plus partners, you're going to be ripping and tearing through these guys. Oh, okay. The more coins I got. Yay. He gives me one coin. All right, floor two. Oh, hello. Hey, what's up? I'm a mover. I know a few things about getting through this dungeon. A few coins. I can move you where you want to go. Where do you want to go? So this is actually kind of an RNG thing. Um, if you want to just skip a few floors, you can with the mover here. Um, or you can just move on normally. Because I'm trying to get 25 floors down and I want to speed this up as fast as possible, we're going to take as many of these as we can. Go down five levels. All right, close your eyes. My secret paths are secret. Don't open your eyes at all. All right, cool. So now if we look over here, we're on floor seven. Now there are a lot of enemies here in the Pit of 100 Trials. It's, <laughs> this, this area is built to just wear your FP down. Now, thankfully, we do have coops here, and we can just go ahead and power shell for 2 FP and take all these guys down. That's exactly what I'm going to do. If I put on multi-bounce, that will give Mario a group-wide option as well. Spike shield goes crazy. Honestly, the, the Pit of 100 Trials is just constant combat against enemies we've generally seen before. If there isn't something super crazy going on that I want to commentate on, I'm probably just going to go ahead and speed up the footage so this can go by a little bit faster. Hey, alright. I think this is floor 9 or 10. This is floor 10. Perfect. 
At every increments of 10, we get a new item. So for floor 10, we have Sleepy Stomp. Off we go. right there. Take care of those guys real quick. Hey there, buddy. There's a beaten up me lying on the ground. Huh? What? Who are you? Whoa! Wow, did you come here just to save me? Really? Pine T Jr. did? Wow, in that case, I have to get back to him alive. Show me the way out. Uh, it's down here, buddy. Alright, cool. Hey, the exit. Okay, Pinty Jr., I'm on my way home. See ya, buddy. I'll catch up with you in, what, 80 floors? Yep, 80 floors. Let's see what we got here, though, in 420. Fire Drive. Attack all ground enemies while ignoring defense. Also burns them. That's actually not too bad. Cool, you again. Hey, what's up? I'm a mover. Take me down five levels, please. Wait, what? Another one? Okay. I'll t uh, I mean, I'll take it. I mean, that puts me... On what floor? 33. I skipped a floor? Crap. Alright, well, I guess we'll just keep going. I got the mover again, but I want to check my floor real quick. I'm on 38. Uh, okay, I don't want to skip any more treasure, so let's move down two levels. That way I'm put at 40. Okay. Pity Flower. When Mario takes damage in battle, occasionally recovers 1 FP. Not too bad, but I'm going to be trying to not take too much damage, hopefully, in this area. Maybe against a difficult boss that we'll be fighting for a long time. Maybe, but not right now.
Floor 50, baby. Huh, there's graffiti here. I'm curious if we can get rid of it right now. Oh, we can. Cool. Good to know. That'll be useful for our trouble later, but I didn't know I could do it right now, but yeah, cool. All right, let's get our level 50 reward. Strange Sack, an item that lets you carry up to 20 items. Yeah, um, so this is an item that you can get at any point in the game. And honestly speaking, I feel like if you're up for it, getting to level 50 here in the Pit of 100 Trials just for this item alone isn't a bad idea, but I just played through the entire game with, with a 15 item bag, and it wasn't too bad outside of certain troubles, so if you don't really want to waste your time here this early on, then don't worry about it. You'll be able to beat the game just fine. Either way, time to move on. Also, floor 60, and with a merchant. We can buy some healing items here, which is pretty useful, along with some attack items as well. Though I will say his insane prices are a little off-putting. Let's go ahead and see what's in this treasure chest, though. Double dip, another one. All right, off we go to floor 61. And our reward is the Double Dip Partner Badge. Let's our item. Uh, let's our partner use items twice in battle for FP. Pretty useful. Pretty useful. All right, back in we go.
here we are, floor 80. Let's check out what we got. Bump attack badge enables you to defeat weak foes by bumping into them on the field. Unfortunately, that's disabled here, but that's a really good badge for uh, re retracing our steps and backtracking. All right, well, we're nearing the final stretch. Only 20 more floors to go. Ninety. What do we get here? Lucky Day Badge. During battle, enemies will often miss while trying to attack Mario. Pretty nice, especially since we've been fighting constantly. Now, do note, it is 7 BP. No merchant for us here on floor 90, which is a little unfortunate, but... Nothing else we can do but press onward. Here we go. Amazy Daisy. All right, well, last time we saw one of these guys, we couldn't do much about them, thanks to our limited star abilities, but now that we have Art Attack, we have the easiest means of taking care of these guys. Thankfully, because Art Attack goes through defense, we can just immediately go in and circle the Amazing Daisy and try our best to get as much damage out on them as we can. Prioritize the Daisy. Because I can just immediately... Use Stampede here to try and finish them off. Come on, Ripper. Take it down. I think it only has maybe two health. It's definitely dead now. Perfect. And look at that star point counter. Oh, holy crap. Now, if I can get lucky enough and close out this fight without any major issues, it'd be really nice. Awesome. Ooh, look at that. What was that, 61? Oh my goodness. Imagine if Merle came in clutch and gave me double to triple. Nice. Hey, Mario became a superstar. Next battle, Mario's crowd and stage will get even bigger. This is the final rank for this.
And with that, here we are at level 99 of the Pit of 100 Trials. I went ahead and changed my badge setup a little bit because I'm going to need to. I put on Power Bounce, HP, FP Plus is still the same, Power Plus is still the same. But I put, I put on Pretty Lucky and Lucky Day, so Mario has a very high chance of dodging attacks. I only kept Flower Saver Partner instead of Mario's because his stuff is already pretty cheap as it is. And I put on Feeling Fine for both Mario and our partners. That uses up all 60 of my BP, and I think I'm pretty good. Next thing I need to do is heal myself up a little bit. This Choco Cake should be more than enough. It's 5 HP and 15 FP, and that's a pretty decent start. But either way, let's go ahead and reach the 100th floor. Not ominous at all. And of course, we heard about three dragons, and we've only met two of them. Here's the third. Yeah, 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 we've seen this cutscene before. And straight to fighting, all right. I like this one, I like this one. No BS about it. Ugh. Wow, what a freak. All right, here we go. This is our battle against, uh, who is it, Bluebella? Let's find out. That's Bone Tail. She's the older sister of Hook Tail. So she's just old bones, in fact. Wow, now that's old. Her body's max HP is 200. For reference, the Shadow Queen's health was 150. We're dealing with a tank here. She has various breaths that might confuse us or put us to sleep. Not with feeling fine. When her HP gets low, she'll recover or reanimate, as the case may be. She's probably stronger than your basic final boss type. Seriously, let's do this right. That is, a, that is in fact, very correct. Bone Tail is the super boss of this game. Well, we put an asterisk on that. And we need a very specific strategy to deal with them. My main strategy is going to be power lifting and power bouncing. Obviously, I could add stuff like charge and whatnot, but I wanted to play safe with this. And I didn't want to mess around with that too much. I'm going to use Mario's turn to go ahead and swap into... Let's swap into Vivian. Here comes Bonetail's first attack. Block it. Bonetail hits like a truck. So after Vivian's first attack where we apply a burn, we're going to immediately power lift. Let's go ahead and use a Shape Fist here. Got that burn going. I like this remix of Hooktail's battle theme. All three dragons have their own unique variation of it. But let's not dawdle on that, we've got a power lift to do. Attack and defense are both incredibly important for this encounter, so I'll take whatever I can get. There we go. Plus four, plus four on both people. Let's go. Here comes a breath. Block it. Still seven damage, even with defense up. That's insane damage. We're going to try and keep Vivian in the front to take damage for Mario. So let's go for another Shade Fist. And then Mario's going to go for the Power Bounce. Oh, come on! Oh, that was a fast fight. Holy crap. I forgot that Mario jumped on the nose and not the foot. I was waiting for something else. Okay, I won't botch it this time. Here we go. Pretty good damage right there. Okay, I dodged that. Nice. Another breath attack incoming. Please be something good for me. No, okay. I've taken away my audience, which means less star points. Okay, after our first attack phase, we took away 60 of their health. All right, that's not bad. I'm going to use Mario's turn to swap out to Ripper. And then I'm going to have Ripper use the hottest dog on Mario here. This will heal him and our FP, and we'll also charge him for his next attack. Another stomp right there, that's okay. We're then going to utilize another power lift. There we go, plus four, plus four. But first things first, we gotta do a ground pound here. Ripper doesn't really do a lot of damage normally, but with the extra power bonus, Ripper's gonna be doing quite a bit of damage here. And we get the fog too, okay, the audience and the stage, <laughs> the stage people are on our side. Another breath. Dodges both of us, perfect. Let's me play greedy. Don't screw up this power bounce. Okay, 987's not ideal, but it's better than most of my power bounces. Okay, 
Okay, 83 health left on Bone Tail. Here comes another breath. Okay, only Mari took the damage there, which is still not ideal, but it's okay. Another power bounce. Okay, that was a much better one. Another ground pound. Alright, 41 HP left. Block it? Alright, cool. Everyone dodged at that time. Let's use this turn to utilize a Zest Deluxe on Mario. Then let's apply another Power Lift. Another easy plus four plus four. Ooh, okay. We get a, a, another defense up. All right, haven't seen this from early yet. Oh, simple quick bite there. Ground pound from Ripper. Sends Bone Tail into 25 HP left. We might be able to close this out with one final power bounce. There we go. All right. Bone Tail is down. And for our victory, we get uh, 999 coins. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll take it. All right. That puts us at like 3,400? Uh, almost. And one star point. Yep, I remember that. And like the like like for siblings, she has something in her gut. I don't know how we couldn't see that originally, but eh, you know what? I'll take it. We did it, dude. First try too. I was actually expecting to have to repeat the pit if I had uh <laughs> Because I wasn't, uh, wasn't very confident in my strategy. Either way, let's see what we got for beating Bone Tail. The Return Postage Badge does half damage back to enemies if they directly attack Mario. Huh, okay. Well, with all that, I guess there's not really much else for us to do but to head on back to Roadport. See ya, Bone Tail. Oh yeah, you guys. First things first, though. Save. My dad's back. Sorry for troubling you. I guess health and family really are the most important things, you know? I'll look for new work. I've got to be strong for my dear son. Thank you so, so much. I'll give you my treasure as a reward. It's really important to me, but that, but nothing's more important than my dad, so here. Hey, the silver card. I believe this is actually the last of the Pianta cards. We can finally go gamble. Now if you excuse us, and really, thank you so very much. Yeah, no problem. You solved the trouble. That leaves only one more trouble left to go. Oh, what are you doing here, bro? Hey, what's up? I'm a mover. I know a few things about getting through this dungeon. I got a special deal going on right now where I can take you straight to level 50. I'm not going to take him up on that deal just yet. We have one last trouble to look at, and I want to go ahead and work on it. Now, this last trouble right here in the Trouble Center is called Erase That Graffiti by Swab. I need someone to go to the 50th level of the Pit of 100 Trials for me. Shaboom! So I need someone pretty tough. Shaplowy! For details, please see me next to the Cannon Statue in Far Outpost. You agreed to help for my trouble, Shaplooey! Thanks to you, Shaboom! There is dungeon under Roadport called Pit of 100 Trials. Shakow! Yeah, I'm a little familiar with it. I heard if one writes wish on wall of 50th level, then wish comes true, Shapop. I use special big explosion to get down to 50th level and write wish, crap. And then I realized whole thing was hoax, Shadoop. I risked life getting down there for useless graffiti, I want it erased, Shashoom. I would explode it myself, ease of peas, but getting back down there is not ease or peas, Shakroom. So could you go to the 50th, le 50th level of Pit of One Heart Trials and erase graffiti, please, Shablue? You already erased it? Wow, Shaplu, you are like magician Shakapawi! But it is not like I can confirm whether you actually erased it or not, Shabu. Oh well, I guess I'll just trust you, Shashakiri. Take this reward, Shapow! Zesty made it for me when I told her how much I was missing the snow, Shafoom! Snow Bunny, a Zesty dessert that refills 15 HP but often freezes you, okay? And with that, our last trouble is done! All requests completed. There we go. Every single trouble is done. Finally. 
Now, normally, if you were playing the GameCube version, this is generally where I would say, hey, you've completed pretty much everything you can, unless you really, 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 really want to go for 100%, grabbing all star pieces and shine sprites and whatnot. Speaking of, I should probably upgrade my characters. Um, but that's actually not the case here in the Switch version. There actually is more for us to do, including another visit to the Pit of 100 Trials. I know. A few extra things regarding, um, a certain arena, and a nice little visit to an old friend of mine that we've already seen earlier this episode, that I want to go ahead and get everything I can out of him. So, that'll be our first visit. Now, there are two very, very important things for me to do here while we're in Keel All Key. The first, and probably most important, hey buddy, I need more of your supplies. Thank you. Now, it's been like two hours since I last hit the Whack-A-Bump because of the Pit of 100 Trials, so I think this actually is my last Whack-A-Bump right here? You can only hit him eight times, yes. whack a -woo. After you've hit him enough times, he will go away permanently. Now, one other thing I want to do here while we're in Kiel Key is actually grab a badge I did not actually get while we were exploring this place for the first time. And I've kind of left it for right now because of organization reasons. By dropping down here on the bridge, we can grab the Ice Power Badge, make Mario damage-proof when jumping on fire enemies. This is a very good badge for pretty much all of Chapter 5, and definitely the pit. I didn't grab it because I didn't want to make the game too easy, but now, all bets are off. My next visit is going to be here in the Pianta Parlor. There is something very, very important that we want to get here. Obviously, the membership card is very nice. But I want to know... How much is a... How much is a Power Rush? 100 Pianta Coins? Alright. Increases attack power by 2 when Mario has 5 HP or less. We can get 50 Pianta Coins for 150 coins. We've got quite a bit of money. I don't want to use every single coin I've got right now, but I'm going to use quite a bit of them to get myself a few Power Rushes. I can go ahead and get 3 Power Rushes. I want to go ahead and have extra, uh, an extra 50 Pianta Coins in case I decide to come back here. Next, we can go to the bad shop here in Rogueport and grab ourselves a bunch of <laughs> low HP centered badges, like Power Rush P and uh, Last Stand P. Now, you may be wondering, why am I grabbing a bunch of low HP stuff whenever I have 30 HP? I have to purposely get myself down to low health. Well, if we go to the stat reallocation person here, then for 39 coins, we can adjust Mario's stats. So we can we can choose to increase a stat, so let's go ahead and choose BP. And let's lower Mario's HP for it. Biggity boobity bee! Boobiga boobiga boo! Lippity skippity scoo! Dia! Now, if we were to, I don't know, keep lowering Mario's HP stat, things might get a little funky. And after a few trades... We can get Mario's HP stat down to exactly 5. Which, wouldn't you know it, is the exact amount of HP that we need in order to trigger these abilities' effects. Another very important item we're going to grab down in Roquefort Sewers is the Quick Change Badge. I should have grabbed this before I went into the Pit of 100 Trials, because it allows, you to, uh, allows your partner to act even after using Swap Partner. This is a very, very nice badge that lets you strategize even more. And it's going to come in handy. It is seven badge points, which is pretty expensive, but we've got the extra room now. I'm also going to grab the Happy Flower badge here as well to hopefully restore our FP a, a little passively. Okay, now that I've spent a little bit more of my money over at the Pianta Parlor, this is what my setup currently looks like. Power Bounce, Multi Bounce, Power Bounce, Charge, and then seven Power Rushes. A last, two last stands to increase our defense now that we're at 5 health. A close call to uh, make it to where we can potentially dodge attacks. Pretty lucky and lucky day to also help with dodging attacks. Lucky start to add something good to every start of fights. Happy flower to, ch to increase the chance of regaining FP during combat. Flower saver to lower the cost of certain SP for Mario. Ice power so we can hit fire enemies. Spike shield so we can hit spiky enemies. Feeling fine so we don't get any ailments. Quick change so I can swap my partners out immediately, 
and obviously first attack. Bump attack is not that big of a deal, so we can probably take this off. I think what I'm going to do is add the two power plus partners. I still want my partners to be somewhat capable of handling stuff on, the, uh, on their own, so having them pull their weight a little bit is still pretty good. Let's go ahead and save up, and yep, time to go for another visit to the thousand, uh, not the thousand year door, to the pit of 100 trials. Now, I guess actually one last thing, I got some more life mushrooms because this is a very risky, risky strategy, so if you aren't feeling up to this, you don't have to do it, but if you are going to do this, then make sure you have that extra uh, life insurance. Now, we did just get an RDM final issue, which is exactly what I've been looking for. Or, sorry, the extra issue. Impromptu special, what lies in the pit of 100 trials? Fabled creature spotted. Early this morning, we received a report that a mysterious creature has taken up residence deep within the pit of 100 trials, already rumored to be the lair of an evil dragon. Well, was an evil dragon. According to the eyewitness that spotted it, part of it looked a lot like a certain creature said to be extinct. We call upon our readers to send any ind additional information you might have, should you encounter it. Oh yeah. We need that special issue, which can only be obtained after you have uh, defeated the whack a <laughs> You've hit the whack-a-mole eight times. I think there might be another prerequisite, but I'm working off of very early information, um, since I'm recording this soon after Thousand Year Doors remake has dropped. Um, in terms of when it when this episode will be released, it'll be a while, but I don't know why I went here. Um, but I do know that there are two extra encounters that we can do. This is just the first one I want to go ahead and take down, since we're, you know, in the talks of the Pit of Wonder Trials. Which means, yep, if you want to take down one of the extra bosses that this game has to offer, you have to climb through the Pit of 100 Trials a whole second time. Now, thankfully, we do have our good friend here, which is why I did not spend all of my money. So, I'm going to go ahead and drop down to level 50. Oh, hey, he's here again. I guess something I needed to mention, there is an item that... Uh, we did not obtain, and I'm not going to go back for it right now. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and have it up on screen right now and what it does. If you really want to get it, go ahead. I don't think it's really all that necessary. But let's go ahead and see our damage increase. With our hammer, we do 15 damage. Now, I put on spike shield for a reason, so we can deal with spiked enemies there. Oh, we got a lucky thing right there, which gives us passive FP recovery. And with multi-bounce, we should be able to take these guys down pretty easily. 12 easy damage to all of them. Now, I am not going to subject you to any more Pit of 100 Trials footage. I will see you back at the 100th floor. Alrighty. And we're back here on level 99. I got a few level ups. I think I got three. And I put them all into BP, as you would expect. I do have a little extra to spare, though. I guess the best I can do right now is double dip. There's really not much else for me to put on. So this will be my setup for what we're about to go up against. I have a pretty decent idea of what I'm going to be fighting, but I try not to spoil myself too much. Though, I, I apologize if I'm um, a little overprepared. Let's do it. All right. I don't see anything. Well, Bone Tail's not here. Okay. Oh, hey, Wacka. How you doing there, buddy? That's a rare Wacka. I don't think you see many of his kind anymore. Nope. If you Wacka Wacka, they drop a Wacka Bump. You can either eat those or sell them for a high price. You did hear me when I said these critters are rare, right? Just checking, because that means you should not whack them. You do understand that. Right, Mario? <laughs> uh, wacka who? I'm Wacka. You sure traveled a long way to see me. It's kind of cramped and dark down here, but it's also super quiet. Such a relaxing getaway spot. Who? I want more Wacka bumps. Wacka who? So that's why you're here? You want to play with me? In that case, let's play. Ba bam. Yeah. Wacka is one of the extra super bosses 
of Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. Why is the whack a bump on the field? I don't know much else about this encounter other than the whack has a lot of health, does a lot of damage, and that it was that I needed to actually um, remove all of the whack a bumps before they could spawn. Also, this music. Okay. Well, let's go ahead, go ahead and see what we're dealing with here with uh, the Wacka. Let's go ahead and tattle. That's a Wacka. They're pretty rare, but you can also find them hiding in Kiala Key. Well, not anymore. He's got a max, max HP of 108, attack of 10, defense of 1. Okay, so... Alright, a little more aggressive than Bone Tail. I never expected to run into one of these guys all the way down here. When he's attacked, he'll drop a whack a bump, and he'll use that bump for a powerful attack of his own, okay? That means we should try to use a few attacks as possible to keep him from dropping those whack a bumps. Seriously, I never expected to fight a whack -a. It's so hard to tell what they're thinking. I bet he gets real scary when he's mad, but I hope we don't find out. Okay, so the whack a bumps, he, uh, he can attack with them, and if we hit him, then he spawns a more, so we have to do pretty careful hits. I think what I'm gonna do is actually charge this turn. There we go. Get extra attack power there. Block it. Okay, yeah, nine damage. Holy crap! Uh, let's swap out Goombella for who would be a good person here? Um, probably Poops, actually. And then, let's use Koops' turn to give Mario a Shell Shield. Okay, decent. He'll be able to survive a few hits. And then, let's use Mario's turn to Power Lift. I'm basically going to just try and kill him in one go. I'm not gonna... I'm not... <laughs> you know, usually I'm like, okay, I'll showcase what this guy can do, but I'm a little paranoid. I don't want to have to do the pit again if I screw this up. So I am gonna play a little aggressive here. Uh, let's see if we can get... Pl okay, plus four, plus three, that's alright, I guess. Okay, what you gonna do, Wacka? Does he not do anything unless you have a Wacka bump on the field? Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. Uh, okay, let's go to Mario's turn. And let's do ourselves a... Hmm, I actually, I do kind of want to see what the fight is like, so let's go ahead and use a power jump. 20 damage. There you go. Okay, he has two bumps on the field. And then, poops. Uh, let's go ahead and have you defend, actually, buddy. Wait, what? Oh, of course he can heal. He's a freaking wacka. Okay, so he can also use it to heal? Okay, well, then I definitely want to take him down fast. It's power bounce time. Okay, yeah. He has a lot of whack bumps on the field, but I think we'll be okay. I don't think this is worth it. Let's go ahead and just guard again, I think. Okay, he's attacking. That's two, that's three. Okay, he used all of them to attack, okay. <laughs> Sorry there, Koops. Oh, the, the Bowser effect, right there. Uh, what's the red bump? Um, I don't like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take him down right now. Uh, let's just take him down. There we go. The whack is defeated. I'll go ahead and put up on screen what the red bump does, if I haven't already, because we haven't seen it yet. So, there we go. Wacka is down. Interesting. I'm... Wacka being a super boss is really cool, actually. Holy crap. Wacka, ooh, guess I lost, but that was fun. Hope to see you again sometime. Oh, so you can refight him. Oh, that's cool. Gold Wacka Bump. A shiny Wacka Bump obtained from Wacka. It sadly cannot be eaten. Oh, that sucks. I guess it's just a, it's a medal of honor that you were able to defeat the Wacka. That's cool. But now I can finally say... Hang on, let me get let me get Koops back up to speed. Now I can finally say that we're done here with the Pit of 100 Trials. Yes, there's that one piece of loot I didn't get, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not here for 100%. I'm just here to see as much of the game as I can. Anyway, back to report. Now, believe it or not, we are still not done here. There is one more thing that I want to do before we finally close the book on this journey. But, after doing just a teeny bit of research, um, 
I've come to realize that I actually need some practice on something before I go and do whatever it is I'm about to do. So, for the first time, let's go ahead and talk to this battle toad here. So I want to practice super guarding. Now, super guarding is something I have not talked about at all. It is a it is a guard, but it has a smaller window of success, but it will counter the enemy's attack coming at you. Now, it also utilizes the B button instead of the A button. I haven't talked about this at all because I'm not really a super guard person. Also, is this a remix of Autumn Mountain from Origami King? I think it might be. Anyway, let's go ahead and try this out. There we go, Super Guard. Perfect. I'm going to sit here and practice this for a little bit. I suggest you do too if you're about to do what I'm about to do. I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit better about this. Alright, well, let's go ahead and stop this. Thank you, Battlemaster. I'm also gonna go ahead and max out Miss Mouse's Shine Sprite rank. Poor Flurry didn't get a single upgrade this entire game. Obviously, I could go and go and get the Shine Sprite and needed to do that, but I'm lazy. And the last thing I have decided I'm going to do is stock up on life shrooms. I can almost guarantee I'm going to need these. Next, I went ahead and gave my partner's damage dodge P to hopefully increase their defenses if they get hit. And I also gave them last stand and close call to give them a, chan <laughs> a fighting chance at surviving if they are at low health. There's really not much else here for us though. So what is all this hubbub about? Well, if you remember from a while ago, we got a nice little uh, mail from a friend of ours. Accept my challenge from Prince Mush. This wasn't just a nice little lore thing where we could talk to Mush and he would be like, Oh, hey, you should challenge me sometime. And then it ends there. No. This is something even more serious than that. Good old Mush Man can be found right next to the save block, exactly where it, <laughs> where he belongs. That's Prince Mush, he's Jolene's younger brother. Poor guy's been through a lot, so it's great that he's been able to return to the ring like this. He's all set for the exhibition match. I bet he's a tough opponent, so be ready for a doozy of a fight. Oh yeah. Mario, my friend, you came. Thanks to you, I've been able to thrill my fans once again as Prince Mush. I'd love to show you my appreciation by fighting you. If you're up for it, just enter my exhibition match. Yep. Now, while we could climb up all the way to the top again through the ranks, we have to unfortunately go through the minor, major, minor and major league because our rank got threw out, thrown out for some reason. Thankfully, we can just immediately begin the exhibition match whenever we want. All fighters wishing to take part in the exhibition match must first hear an ex explanation of the rules. For exhibition matches, fighters can choose their opponents when reserving a match. Your ranking is not affected when you take part in an exhibition match. There are also no promoter requests. Otherwise, they proceed the same as ranked matches. You will receive fight money for these matches. You can increase your opponent options by increasing your rank. This concludes the explanation. Please choose review rules if you want to hear them again. Prince Mush. Let's do it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Gonzalez, match time. Follow me, bug. To my death. Oh, here we go. No time like the present. It's time for today's main event, and we're in for a beaut of a brawl. Here, before your eyes, our newest champ, the Great Gonzalez, will battle the very first champion, Prince Mush. Once all is said and done, which of these two beloved fighters will be left standing in the arena? Let's get our star gladiators out here, first making his triumphant return to the Glitz Pit, the Great Gonzalez.
What an entrance. The crowd is going wild for Gonzalez, our third champion. And standing opposite our newest champion is the first ever fighter to bear the title. That's right, folks. Back in action and better than ever, ready for a royal return to the ring. Give it up for Prince Mush. Two champions face to face at last. The excitement among the crowd has reached a new peak. It's time to ring the starting bell and begin a match that will echo through the halls of the Glitz Pit for eternity. Get ready to brawl! Our final battle in this entire game against Prince Mush. Let's do it. Okay, Mario, let's give this match everything we've got. Oh, okay, I got my HP recovery. Not bad for the first few turns. Oh, the music, man, is so good. Okay, what's his pose there? Oh, man, he's... All right, he's acrobatic, I see. All right, something I did note is that uh, Prince Mush has different stances. He can sidestep, he can jump, and then he can also guard. He's jumping right now, which means we need to use jump attacks. But first, let's go ahead and tackle him. That's Prince Mush, the original champion of the Glitz Pit. He's finally making his comeback. He's got a max HP of 96, okay, attack of 6 and defense of 6. Holy crap. You'd never guess that he was kept away from fighting for such a long time. He's still a powerhouse. He's known for being a clean fighter, so he'll come straight at you without relying on dirty tricks. He's also known to switch between different battle styles. Just keep an eye on his stance. When he changes it up, we'll have to think fast and come up with a good attack method. And if you're not sure you'll come out on top, try to rely on super guards. Also, I've heard he's not a fan of cake. What's the story there, hmm? Some cake-based trauma in his past? Well, he was poisoned by one. Whatever, if you can manage to beat this guy, you'll become the true, unrivaled champion. That's the plan. Okay. Currently, my idea is to charge with Mario here. Get my attack up as, soon, as quickly as possible. Okay, he swapped, he swapped his stance to sidestepping, which means hammers is going to be necessary. Oh, he can drain your FP with his, with his attacks? Also, yeah, the super guard was mentioned, and that's exactly why I practiced them, so I could utilize that. Let's go ahead and swap partners over to Koops. We're going to go ahead and apply a shell shield to Mario. Mario's going to be doing pretty much all of my damage, so I want to make sure that he is pretty safe and <laughs> secure. Next, we're going to go ahead and power lift. I want to see if he's going to swap back to jump stance after this. The main idea here is to just to get as many power boosts as possible. Because, honestly speaking, our defense is not really that important. Okay, he's going back to jump stance, which is good. Oh, okay, okay, he's just a Super Saiyan. All right, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Um, okay. So he's powered up. Um, I don't think Koops is probably going to live anything, so let me swap over to... Well, no, because he's got the defense up now, so I'm just going to go ahead and defend, maybe. And then sick Mario at him. Let's use a power bounce. There we go. Okay, half his health is gone. Okay, sidestepping. Block, 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 block! Okay. That looked good. Okay, his damage output isn't too crazy just yet. He's sidestepping, though, so we have to use our hammer. Uh, let's keep Koops in the front here, and let's just heal him up. I want to make sure he's fairly healthy. We've got lots of items. Just use a whack a bump. Let's swap over to Mario's turn, and unfortunately, I don't really have much in the way of damage, so let's use a normal hammer attack. There we go. All right, 26 HP left. One more good turn. I think he'll go down. Okay, he's guarding, and he's powering up. A fiery fighting spirit is now burning within Prince Mush. Okay, he's in guard stance now. Oh, okay, holy crap, that did a lot of damage. And now Koops is frozen, great, all right. Okay, I don't have my damage boosts. Oh, he's going again? That's that's three charges, holy shoo, okay. Um, can I 
attack him here? I've got my shell defense. Let's go and swap our partner out to Bobbery. Because he's got the most defense. And then I'm kind of scared. I'm going to go ahead and charge this turn. Okay, here we go. Okay, there we go. I got the super guard off. Nice. That was 24 damage. And he attacks like six times. I would have done 100 damage to me. What the crap? All right, well, I mean, we got the super guard off. So here we go. Yeah. See ya, Prince Mush. Four star points. I played like a coward, but you know what? I'm okay with that. That was a scary fight, man. So, so strong. You got me beat, Mario. Who could have seen this coming? You couldn't plan a more ferocious battle. Thank you, thank you. Wild moves, raw power, flying fists of fury. What beautiful destruction. This was without a doubt, inarguably, definitely, absolutely, completely... An extreme battle of the very highest caliber. But there could only be one winner, and this time, it was the Great Gonzalez. One last time, we get to hear everyone cheer our name. Even though, yeah, I pulled a lot of dirty tricks there. <laughs> Here's your fight money of 30 coins, Mr. Gonzalez. Okay, well, that's not too bad. Oh, that's right. I heard Mush... Oh, oops. Uh, Prince Mush has something to give you. I just saw him in the hallway, if you want to catch up to him now. That's all. Take care, Gonzalez. Thank you. I have no intention of climbing up the ranks right now. There really isn't much for you, except for refighting all the enemies and getting the champion room back. Mario, thank you so much for that incredible match. We put on quite a show up there, didn't we? I know I gave it everything I had. We should both be proud. I have a gift for you. Consider it a thank you for being such a great opponent. I hope you'll take it. You got Prince Mush's belt, a belt matching Prince Mush's and a sign of his friendship. I'm ready and willing for a rematch any time, and I intend to win it. Yeah, we can fight him at any point we want, which is pretty cool. Now, while there is still quite a bit we can do around Rogueport and surrounding areas, get all the remaining Shine Sprites, Star Pieces, do some Beyonce games, talk to random people, get all the catalogs and whatnot, there's still so much we can do. But this is really the last piece of major content that there is for us here. And I think this is overall a pretty decent place to stop. I wasn't intending on 100%ing this game in this series, and this was just supposed to be a nice look back on the game and experiencing it with you guys. I gave my final thoughts on the game and my overall opinions on it and after we beat it, so I don't really want to drag this segment on for too long, but I want to say, once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for putting up with what is probably going to be a really weird upload schedule. I don't really have a plan on how I'm going to edit these. For reference, I just finished editing the second episode of this series when I'm recording this, so it's been an interesting time. And I hope you stick around for what's next to come. This type of mini-series is not something I plan on doing all too often. Um, and the next major project will be in a Let's Play playthrough style of video. So if you missed that, don't worry. That is on the way. This game is amazing. Go check it out. It is incredible. And there is so much that I'm probably going to have to cut out from many of these chapters just to try and fit into a reasonable time frame. But, I mean, yeah, uh, that's that's pretty much all I gotta say. I I don't really have much else to say. Uh, Vivian? Um, Vivian's cool. Uh, hopefully Intelligent Systems makes future Paper Mario games similar to this. Yeah. I, did, I didn't really think of an outro for this. Um, see you in the next one, I guess. 